a window into an aquatic world of intrigue and wonder. A zen moment with the jellies. Welcome to the famous Monterey Bay Aquarium in California. This morning, before the doors open, I'm getting a special treat. We got the aquarium to ourselves, which I've never experienced before. And look, it is morning prime time for these critters. The bubble curtain is up to create a barrier for the fish because no one else is here, so they don't bump their noses into the glass. For four decades, this place has inspired ocean conservation and young children. I first came here with my family in 1984, just after it opened. Now, 40 years later, I'm back. The aquarium is home to more than 700 animal and plant species. This is awesome. Including these deep sea coral that are cared for behind the scenes. So I'm gonna target some of the corals that have their polyps out to make sure that they get a good feed today. So we just puff it around their open polyps. Is it true that they can live to be up to a thousand years old? Yes. They, they, a lot of coral in the deep sea are centuries wow. old. They can get to be the size of a, a king mattress. These corals are from the depths of Sir Ridge off the coast of Monterey. But even down here, things are changing. Temperatures in our oceans are rising, affecting coral everywhere. While many challenges remain, technology is helping, and student-led solutions are leading the way, including at the world's largest reef system. The Great Barrier Reef, it's close to the size of Japan or Italy. It's between 2,000 to 3,000 individual reefs with organisms living throughout. Through my career, you've seen this decline in coral health, and I wanted to understand why that was happening and figure out if there's ways to, to help that. Taylor Whitman is a coral ecologist and avid diver. Today, she's deploying these specially designed coral seeding devices each one holds 10 baby corals ready to grow on the reef. What happens with baby corals is there's many, many things that cause them to die in that first year of life. The way I like to think about a coral seeding device, it's that coral's first home. We're providing it a first layer of protection. These structures are being used in an effort to restore areas of the reef affected by climate change. And the second that temperatures get a bit too hot or get a bit too cold, we can see a decline in health. And in some cases, that means mass mortality or you can have bleaching events. At the Australian Institute of Marine Science, a world leader in reef restoration, researchers use cutting edge tech to study and even mimic the coral life cycle. Corals are first spawned on site. Corals are actually really smart in their reproductive output. They can produce millions and millions of babies. Then they're monitored with a robotic camera before being grown on these blocks. And what we try to do is harness those babies. We can place them on these different devices and we can use technology to actually get those devices back out to the reefs. So we have corals that have been out on the reef here. Um, you can see this kind of brown is a coral that was on the reef for about two years. The PhD student works on ways to improve the design of the device, combining science and engineering. From this early plastic model to these ceramic triangles designed to protect the babies from hungry fish. It's protected by these walls so that the fish can actually graze at its surface. Last year, 10,000 devices were deployed onto the Great Barrier Reef, and that number is set to grow. Researchers hope to release 1 million baby corals here by the end of 2025. Those devices are really 
crucial because firstly, it is a vehicle to bring the coral down to the seabed. Devices also allow for the coral to be attached to the reef over a period of several months. Also being tested here is this coral bioglue developed by Brett Lewis and a team from the Queensland University of Technology. So the adhesive itself is quite tactile. I picture it more as a gum. Uh, it's quite sticky and stretchy and it can seep into the rubble, basically creating roots deep within these rubble beds. This adhesive is being designed to stabilize these coral graveyards known as rubble fields that can move in the waves. These rubble beds occur naturally, but they're becoming a growing problem, says Brett. Once you have this rubble in place, it's quite loose and unstable. When you have a constant resupply from coral bleaching and cyclones, these patches become unsustainable for coral resilience. The adhesive glues pieces of rubble together to try to stabilize the substrate and hopefully allow new corals to attach and grow. If it's stable, it'll regrow, cement it together along with other cementing organisms like calcified algae, and basically start regrowing new reefs. The biodegradable glue is partly made out of plant waste, and Brett hopes to conduct a large trial on the reef next year. For now, teams at the Institute will continue to test and develop new technologies with the hope to one day restore coral reefs, not just here, but across the globe. I think that corals are resilient, and as long as we can help them see through the next few years, then we might be able to see something that's really exciting. Our oceans are facing unprecedented challenges. Boom, boom, release. But tech being developed by these students is enabling new ways to access and study the deep blue, helping to ensure a brighter future for our oceans, our planet, Three, two, one. and the next generation. Want to find out more about these young innovators? Scan here.